Okay, everybody, uh, welcome back. And I was going to make a uh, take a look at the comments that uh, Jack was talking about. He said, hey, look, if this dollar, you know, pushing back the dollar is going to in the devaluation process. I don't know if it's going to be a devaluation process, but he was talking about the euro uh, could get once above the 870.75 and could easily catapult to the 930.940. That's the way you kind of have to look at these markets. You know, uh, I always bring that up because, uh, you know, a few people chide me because I have these levels here. You know, I guess they want one level here, one level there, maybe one in the middle. And Trading is about this market going from level to level. And Jack's right about that in the sense that if it takes out this, then you have to say, well, now the door is open to this higher price. We talked about that several times when uh, when the euro had um, had got to the memory when it got to the 716 and it pulled back and then we were looking for a more, you know, I wouldn't say definitive pullback. Uh, because that's what we were looking for, the 758. But we got a decent pullback. We said, okay, well, if it takes out <clears throat> takes out a certain level, that's going to open the door for much higher. That's the way you have to go, because with the currency markets, they, they're they highly leveraged. And on top of that, they can, they can if a, a, I don't want to say a fundamental event, but this is kind of like a somewhat a fundamental event in the sense that now the Trump administration is really going to, in a sense, wage war against a strong dollar then you have to recognize, wow, the script is flipped. And that's what I'm saying. Some of these big banks may, may also be doing the same thing when they say, you know, wow, we thought a strong dollar for 2017, that was the theme. But now, you you know, it looks like things are changing. And they may have to, they may have to jump off the train and jump and get onto the train going the other direction. Um, so... Yeah, Pat. Yeah, Jack says price action suggests we may see higher still. Yeah, I completely agree with that, um, and that's that's the key thing. Um, let me see. Pedro says dollar longs have been reduced in the weekly bus, and now we are at levels from mid October. You do not think this factor may give the dollar a boost? Well, <clears throat> once again, Pedro, it's all about the theme because once again, like I said, people trade on technicals. I, I said that yesterday. That's an old saying. Uh, you trade on technicals, but overwhelming fundamentals, and that's overwhelming, overwhelming fundamentals will always kick technicals in the A. And we talked about that. What if what if there was a, and I told you, I, I, don't, I haven't traded soybeans in so many years, I don't remember even when. But, um, you know, let's say, you know, you look at a, a horrible soybean chart, and it's just so bearish, it's like, oh, my God, we're just going to go lower and lower and lower. And then all of a sudden, some damage comes out to the crop in a major way. And... Um, Next thing you know, you look at the most bullish chart that you ever saw. That's what I'm saying, overwhelming fundamental. Well, if Trump's going to be over there uh, spearheading the, the, the case for a weaker dollar, and he's going to be, he may be relentless, and, you know, that might be his modus operandi, then people aren't going to fight that. Now, it's one thing, uh, <clears throat> you have to look at things, I always look at things in context, no matter what it is. So it'd be one thing to say, if you looked at this and said, yeah, I'm tired of the dollar being so strong. We're not taking it, okay? You say, well, I don't know what he's talking about. Look at this. It's been, the year has been advanced against the dollar, but when you back it up, back up the truck, and you look at it in perspective, you're saying, oh, okay, well, yeah, I guess it has been. And then if you go even further back, like I told you, it wasn't that long ago, what, a year and a half ago, we were at 125. <laughs> you know, it was only, you know, not that long ago, Earlier in the month, we were at 103. So that's what I'm saying. When you look at it in context, so um, <clears throat> we talked about here how the year had held up really well. So technically, it's kind of held up well, and it's ext it's been extremely oversold. And then if they say you got one administration saying we're going to be talking about this the whole time, well, then you really have the makings or the recipe for a little bit more of a correction, and we'll have to talk about that. So, where can we go to? Uh, for starters, and like I said, I'm surprised. I thought, I mean, we were looking for a much stronger euro eventually. That was the end of going play out. When we'd done really well against the 716, the 758, we saw the pullback, blah, blah, blah. I thought they'd probably rally up to 10709 tops. And then we'd start to work lower. But obviously, if that Trump advisor comes out, that basically flips the script. 
But my thinking is, you stopped out a lot of people, but I can't believe there's a lot of people to buy at this point. So um, if the if they don't raise, which it appears that's going to be the case for the FOMC, which uh, I was of the ilk at the beginning of the week saying, no, I think they're going to raise. What I didn't realize, and I, we went over that already, but I'll do it for anybody that missed it, is that you know I was reading the Gartman letter, and um, they were uh, you know now they're rotating out the members, the uh, for for the voting members. And two of the people that got rotated out were Hawks. So it just looks likely now that they're not going to take any action. So um, if that's if that's going to be the case, and I would have favored that they would have gone and taken action. I still think the year's a little bit extended. I think people are going to still say just in case, and we'll probably pull back from these levels. But uh, what you could see is if they don't take action, you can see a quick run up here towards this 865. I don't know if it will take out the high. And then work lower, and then I think eventually we come back towards the 716 for support, and then we probably start to work, you know, much higher at that point. Um, a couple of key things we have here, you want to keep in mind, we've got two fibs, and one of them a very major fib that we went over yesterday, and that's 865 is at 38% of the entire range from 340 up to 1713. So now when you look at this and you see this at 108, you're thinking. Wow, we had a pretty good rally off these. Oh, wait a minute, 117. Well, then I guess this thing could go higher. And Jack's looking at it the right way in the sense that, okay, if it takes out this level, then it's going to go to the next level, or the chance of the probabilities are. And some people might say, well, that, you know, they'd like it. Um, hang on one second. Um, they would like it. Um, you know, you'd say, okay, well, if it takes out 816, that means that it's going to 1004, or we have the old bias pivot to 1043. But that's not the way you want to look at it. You just want to just kind of go with, in a sense, the old saying, go with the flow. It's however the market's taking. We've already had a pretty good run. That's my little concern here. And and you probably left a lot of people. I mean, people got stopped out. But I don't think there's, there is isn't. You're going to probably rally, but I think in order to get a sustained rally, you're going to have to back up the same way that gold had to and back up to pick some people up. I don't think when you look at this and you think, well, then they probably have to come all the way down to six. Not necessarily because, once again, if you look at it in context, look how far the euro has fallen. So a pullback, they'll probably want to defend the 716. Well, they may even get, and get past this 107 right in here, right there. Maybe that. We call it that 683, maybe. You know, if we want to push a little, because that 716 is pretty good, but they may want to test just that area, just below 107, and that'll probably open the door for us then to, you know, get garner buyers and then try and work out towards these upper levels. But for now, one of the things you'll have to have, uh, you'll be looking at is, as I said, this uh, triple level here. Well, you got level 865. Then 865 is 38%. And 872 is 161% of 620 to 776. And that's the 161% extension of this recent range here. This high, this low. You see that? So 161% extension. Normally, that wouldn't carry necessarily that much weight. But what you're looking at, you're looking for a confluence. So you've got a 38%, which is... 340 all the way back to that retracement high. This is when um, um, that was the previous summer, not this summer, but there was a thing, it was the summer before. That's where uh, the uh, they ended up taking off the trade. There was a trade where you sell the euro and you bought the wand. And um, I don't remember what the details were at the time, but everybody started bailing out of that trade. And when they did, you saw the euro just absolutely freaking scream. Um, that day, and that's, uh, we have to go back here, see that's even higher than that, see, look, look. see that, all the way up to 1713, look at that, that run, it's just a phenomenal run. Um, I remember fading this. Man, I was in some trouble. I hung on, and it all came out okay. But i tell you what, it was no fun. Uh, 
So that's what I'm saying. So from 1713 and the low 340, so when you're at 108, essentially, you're thinking, we're so overbought. Well, if you look at things in, in context, this could keep going correct. If, you know, when people look at it and say, well, God, this market's really, it has come down so far, and you're going to have the administration banging against a strong dollar, maybe we're going to have to allow, and that's when traders start looking and saying, okay, if we get past here, where do we go? My thinking is, if we eventually pull back and then we get going our head of steam and we get past this 865, then we go to 1043, the old bias pivot. But let's talk about for today. For today, um, we'll put the resistance at 875. It could get past it a little, spook a little bit back, but we'll make that. So let's move the bias chart here. We have a little bit of time because there's no real data. So we're going to say, and this is for you know, FOMC day because you're going to see a little bit more volatility. So resistance is going to be 875. And support, um, I'm going to have to go with this 716 right in here, 716. So we'll keep that support. And we need to get clipping along right now. So we're kind of giving you the what a general outlook is. I mean, no one knows exactly how markets will react, where the euro will go to. All we're looking at different levels where we could do some business and um, and see how the other markets work. You know, we might be looking at the bond market at the time and looking at gold market. You know, to give some you know ideas of how those markets are holding up. JT made some comments about the dollar CAD. We'll we'll take uh, and I will I will note those JT. Thank you for your input. Um, yeah, Luca Luca said just got in. You already went through your thoughts on the Fed. Yes, we did. Uh, we spent a lot of time on that. One would think they might want to make a stand and uh, till the hawk is just to mark their independence. Yeah, Luca, but we just we're not going to go back into all that. But we will. I will tell you that we did. Well, the key thing that we hit on was. Um, you know, uh, I thought the Fed would want to take action this this week, but I did read on that uh, the Gartman report was that uh, two of the uh, the rotating members out, voting members, and two of the members that are getting rotated out are hawks. So less of a propensity for them to take action. So that's why now the market doesn't think they'll take action. So that's that's the deal on that. So here's a, here's a cable. Um, with twenty six eighteen to seventy eight percent. And I had support, not support, resistance at 2630, I think that said 32 or 33. I don't remember, but I did sit on a wise trade alert and point out to the guys in the chat room. Um, we had this 2651. Honestly, I didn't think it'd get to the 2651. I could have just said, oh, yeah, there's 2651. We were working higher, and we did have a solid close in here overall. But I thought, okay, well, you got the 78%. You got the 2632, which I'll show you where I was coming up with that. Right there. Right there. I think I said 32 or 33. Anyway, it was not going to be a difference one pip. So I didn't think, I didn't, really didn't think they get to 2651. I just thought, okay, they'll probably sputter here and they'll pull back. But doggone it, they didn't make it all the way to 2651, the top of our zone. Now, don't forget, we had that 2411, and that's where they, they found their support. And once again, there's some good UK data that came out, but also, like I said, everybody go, everybody gets to ride for free. Now, I'm talking about the Trump comments or the Trump advisor comments on the euro being way undervalued. So everybody benefited from that and got a little extra juice on the upside, but we had some good UK data. So for resistance for today, once again, they don't take action. Everybody wants to be bearish the dollar. Then we're going to have to go with this 2701, and we'll take a look at it on the chart. I see these touches here. We'll just go with this 2701 here, right there, as resistance. We do have this 51, but yet, once again, if they don't take action, that could open the door for a quick dollar sell-off or when it's looking at an area. You know, we don't want to just say 51, because this way, if it shoots past it, you get to 27, you go, okay, let me see how things look right now. Is the market struggling? Okay, great. Then that's a decent resistance. I can weigh my risk reward. I'll put my stop, let's say, above these highs or whatever. And so you have something to, to judge by. It's not, you know, there's no guarantees. I mean, obviously, we hit the low right here, 2411, on that double fib confluence. 
And it's nothing that I'm doing. I'm just I'm just looking at the technicals and combine that with Fibonacci. That's all I'm doing. And I mean I go with the touches and I'll look at you know zones or whatever for price action. So we're gonna say twenty seven oh one is gonna be resistance and support. Uh, pretty wild day. <sighs> If they were to take action, let's say support would come in. It's going to be a little bit wide, but we'll say support would be wide. There. So 27.01, and on the downside, 25.28, which is a hell of a move. That'd be 100 pips, but it is what it is. Because it's, it's FOMC day, we're going to see a lot of volatility, or we'd expect to see some. So 2701. And like I said, these these levels, you know, most of the time, I, I, I mark them relatively close. So I'm not saying, well, you see, if the, if the euro gets to 110, it's a sell. And if it gets to 106, it's a buy. Now, we make our, our, we make our resistance and support levels very close. But you have to factor in this is going to be... I think it's it's going to be. I wouldn't say it's going to be a non-event, uh, but them rotating those hawks out of the voting members is certainly going to take some of the sting from the bee. So I think that uh, obviously, like I said, there's less chance, and I think the market sees that less chance for the Fed to hide. I still think the euro is going to pull back in here because you have to factor in the risk. What if? Uh, but like I said, you have to offer some wide ranges to allow for that volatility. That's to say, if you were to use like a, let's say you put a trade on right before the FOMC and you go, I'm going to use a 30 pip stop in the euro, you're probably going to get stopped out no matter what direction it is. You see what I'm saying? So, so you have to factor in that when you go into an event like that, you're going to have a lot of increased volatility. And with this, we want to factor in our ranges too. Uh, so let's go and move into the Aussie dollar. Obviously, remember the old thing we said, everybody rides for free. Well, like I said, now everybody's, you know, taking their wax against the dollar like a pinata. So um, I think we already put this here at 76.30. Obviously, now we look like we were going to work lower. And that's what I was expecting, for us to rotate. And it was actually working. I mean, we had you know, some nice pullbacks. But we said, hey, look, we don't want to get a close above this 75, 75, and we did. Now, notice we pulled back, but notice how it held. We got below it, but here we come back again. So for today, I think it's way overdone here, but once again, for today, I think you have to allow – this is one market I think that could be susceptible, more so than others. This is one market – because when I look at this, we said you don't want this thing to get above 75, 75. And we got that closed about 75, 75. So that's like, you know what? You can't be short. So we dipped back and we actually lost the 75, 74, but we reclaimed it. To me, it kind of seems like these guys are like, I really don't want to buy this thing up here. So if there's a market that's susceptible more to a pullback, I think it'd be the Aussie dollar. And um, I think we had 76, 30. I'm going to keep that as resistance. I think that's good there. And support, we'll just go with this. I think we might have put 75 or 2, but I like this orange level. Yeah, 75 or 2. So 75 or 2, 76, 30 on the Aussie. That might, we may already have that. Uh, there we go. Oh, let's move that here. And uh, let's take a look at the Kiwi. Okay, here's the one that it, it busted up our potential little head and shoulders here with the Trump whole thing. The you know, you know, the U.S. is a bunch of dummies for not devaluing their currency like everybody else is, and and these comments of his probably aren't going to stop. So, uh, seventy three fifty seven, touch it. That level contained it so far.
Can we get rid of this here? Get rid of this here. And we, we'll keep this one there. It's kind of interesting here because we got above those highs, now we're kind of below the highs. Um, so we had 72.25 and 73.61. Oh, yeah, remember, we, we pushed it up a little bit higher to allow for this. So we'll keep it at 73.61, and support's going to be this bias pivot, 72.25. So I guess no changes there. Nope. Um, I think it's a little bit vulnerable, too. Maybe not. I think the Aussie's a little bit more vulnerable, but that's where we stand here. Let me go on in. Walter says, good morning, Polly. Sorry I got in here so late. Uh, no problem, Walter. Uh, everybody has things that happen. I, I mean, real life. Uh, I've got the same thing, too. I've got a, unfortunately, I've got a repairman coming over here. And uh, it's going to come between, he says, between, I think it's 7 and 9 or 7.30 and 9. I don't know if the heck he's coming in that early. And... Um, and I, I couldn't do anything about the schedule. So um, I'm going to take my break in just a few minutes, but in the second half hour, I will not take a break. That way, if the gentleman shows up, that will be my break. So if he were to show up at exactly 7.35, then I'll take the break then. So we'll take the break before the half hour here, but in the next half hour, I will not be taking a break. And if that guy never shows up or doesn't show up till 8 o'clock, well, then fine, no break. If he shows up at 7.20 or 7.40, well, then I'd be taking a break at that point. And I'll repeat that just so everybody is, is aware and all on the same page. Uh, so let's go into the dollar CAD. And JT had some comments about the dollar CAD. So JT says, good morning, Paul. Dollar CAD stopped at the 3091. Uh, 3091. Oh, yeah, this stopped here, I think. Oh, the, he must have been. No, yeah, 3091. Wow. Okay, so he says... The dollar can stop at the 3091, the 61% from 3168 to 2968 low. Is the next target the 127%, which comes in at 2914? Um, yeah, Max, I'm getting audio, so let me, let me let Max know. Hold on. Hang on. So anyway, so Max, I know. He said the audio cut out. Uh, oh, Max says, the same thing happened yesterday. Yeah, yesterday, um, um, here's the deal. Um, when I logged in yesterday, because um, Kip said that Citrix was having some problems. Um, when I logged in yesterday, Citrix says, uh, we have, I'm talking about them, not Trade. Citrix says, we have a new face so that they're, um, they're revamping their 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 thing or whatever. So I guess they're doing some major update. So it might be impacting. But the audio when I listen, because I'm listening to it actually on my iPad, um, so that that way if if um, audio cuts out or I'm on the wrong screen, although this still happens sometimes, and I pay attention, and y'all tell me, hey, you're on the wrong screen. Um, so that's why I listen on that device separately. Um, so anyway, let's go to the CAD here and see what's happening here. So JT says, does it mean that the 2914 is the next area? So let's, I thought it pull these over. Don't go on. And they did get into that. We said that they could go below that 130. Um, you know, we weren't, I wasn't, I think I said the, the, the support was at 30, 3032, or yeah, I think the 3032. And we said, hey, they can break it, but I'm just going to stay with that. And we're talking about if you were day trading or whatever. So where can they go to now? Let's take a look if, if we're thinking, okay, this dollar is going to go, I don't know why this heck. These didn't even update. What the heck? So if we're, we're playing into this whole dollar weakness thing, where can we go to? 
Uh, this is what we've been looking at. We mentioned before, 2890. Before it's all said and done, 2893 is a 61 percent of 2460 to the high up here, 3599. And then um, let's take a look here. This is the only real key pullback. These are. This, this would be good if you were measuring from there. We're up here now. We've done a lot of work. I don't see anything. I mean, you can see they sharply rallied from that 130 area. We said, hey, you know what, they may go down there, but you know what, we're going to stick with our support. 30, 32 if you're day trading this thing. Um, Here's the deal. We've got this hammer bottom. Um, they're not going to give up this ghost. They're not going to give this up very easily. Because if they were, then my thing is definitively we go down here for starters, just for starters. Because if you take this out, everybody would say, oh, heck no, I won't be buying this thing for a long time. And that would open the door here. It would probably open the door for a test of 2850. But if we were to lose this, yeah, I think we'll go to the 2893, 61%. Now for today, um, it's already time for break. Hang on a minute. Yeah, it's already break time because I want to keep staying on schedule. We'll be back, and um, we'll crank up the supports on that. Thanks for joining us.